Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, our event, Brazil in the Spotlight. And thank you for being here today. My name is Miriam Lazarte. I'm the CEO of Latam Startups. And today we have another event about Latin America with another great white paper and some other speakers that are going to be with us uh, today here commenting about how uh, things are going after the pandemic, you know, or during the pandemic uh, in Brazil and how the tech ecosystem has evolved so far. So I'm going to start sharing my presentation here. So just bear with me for a second. I'm going to share here. You are going to see my presentation about Latin America in the spotlight, Brazil in the spotlight. There you go. Uh, so today, just to start, I'm going to start sharing a little bit uh, our agenda. So our agenda today, uh, we are going to have a, a, a small introduction uh, about the Brazilian startup ecosystem. Uh, of course, the economic overview, the startup ecosystem, uh, key sectors that you should be aware of right now during the pandemic. Actually, I was uh, also a little bit surprised to hear about uh, one of the sectors that is raising up so that that will be uh, a good uh, thing uh, you know for you guys to know and then uh, you know some recommendations and after that we are going to open the uh, questions uh, you know and conversation with our speakers um, so just uh, you know um, to have some introduction in here uh, I'm going to say that Brazil is the fifth more most populated country in uh, on earth and accounts for one of third of Latin American population. Uh, so Rio de Janeiro, uh, in the eyes of many in the world, continues to be uh, a, the icon uh, of Brazil and the nation, uh, you know, uh, cities, uh, they, they have huge, uh, you know, hydroelectrical and industrial complexes, uh, mines and fertile, fertile uh, farmlands, make it uh, the world's major uh, economies. Um, so, of course, everyone knows probably about Sao Paulo, uh, you know, Rio de Janeiro and some other, uh, you know, uh, medium sized cities that are really huge for, uh, you know, in terms of population and in terms of economic, uh, you know, impact in Latin America. Uh, so just for you guys also to know, Brazil is a federal republic uh, consisting in 26 states and a federal district of uh, Brasilia is the capital uh, in Brazil. So as education, and, and again, this is more like an introduction here, education uh, means uh, to the economy success in Brazil and schooled uh, laborers uh, earn roughly one fourth of the wages of uh, secondary school graduates who in turn uh, attain only half of the salary of those uh, with university degrees. In addition, unemployment among the college educators is only one fourth in the national average. Uh, in terms of the economy, um, Brazil economy, uh, economic story uh, can be largely char characterized as a cycle of uh, booms and bursts. Uh, from the 16th uh, to the mid 20th century, the country has heavily dependent on one or two major agricultural project, uh, products uh, whose prices fluctuate uh, widely on international markets. Uh, but we are here to talk about technology. So, um, you know, I'm going to be uh, giving some more economic statistics, but uh, going ahead in the presentation, you will see more about the startup ecosystem in general. Okay. Uh, so continue with, uh, you know, some information here. Uh, Brazil uh, has the fifth largest uh, global population and fast growing middle class, uh, meaning that there is a huge consumer market. The size of diversity of the consumer market has created a wealth uh, in the excited commercial opportunities for foreign businesses uh, looking to access a new clientele uh, within Brazil. As international trade matters, uh, you know, is establishing a commercial presence in Brazil gives companies access to other countries in the region and allows them to take advantage of strategic trade agreements. Brazil is part of the South uh, common market commonly known as Mercosur. Uh, so you will see that, you know, this presentation, we start with the Mercosur, uh, you know, block. And that's why in December, you're also going to see Argentina and Uruguay in the spotlight. Uh, so companies have direct access to Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay, and seven other members uh, through this agreement. As uh, foreign investment, uh, you know, for, for this point, 
for those uh, thinking about incorporating a local company in Brazil, 100% uh, foreign ownership is allowed and companies can sponsor uh, the visas for foreign employees. Additionally, local companies can be incorporated in Brazil without the need of physical visit the country. And the process can be completed through a power of attorney. Um, so there are some changes, uh, you know, in the process uh, for international companies looking at Brazil. And I think that will be partially uh, some of the discussions that we are going to have uh, in the conversation with our speakers too. Uh, so for us, the collaborative environment, uh, Brazil is a uh, different uh, market uh, presence, speculators with a heap of um, engaging business opportunities. And while Brazilian business condition has its complexities, uh, collaborating with local partners will enable a more efficient and quicker understanding of the market. And for the, uh, you know, one of the final points when we are talking about imports and exports, uh, the free development of merchandise and enterprise through the expulsion of uh, customs obligations and no tax limitations, normalized uh, outside taxes and business arrangement among individuals include monetary aggre aggregating and uh, modern financial capital administrations, customs and transportation uh, and, trans and transport approach. Now, uh, talking a little bit about the pandemic, uh, you know, we always uh, have this point in all the presentations because, of course, the pandemic has, uh, you know, impacted all uh, countries around the world. And we take a very look, uh, you know, of how, the, uh, you know, the pandemic impact in, in Brazil, in particular in this case. Uh, so uh, Brazil, uh, you know, um, uh, labor uh, through its deepest economy downturn in recent memory of uh, the first half uh, 2020. And while the economy uh, witnessed a recovery of sorts uh, in the second half, the scars of the pandemic still uh, run deep. Um, a surge of new COVID-19 cases, uh, you know, this year has again soared uh, the sentiment and weighted in the economy activity. But, uh, you know, by uh, June 1st, 2021, the complementary law uh, a, in Brazil, uh, establishing a legal framework for startups and innovative uh, entrepreneurship in the country uh, has uh, uh, has come up. So with this new law, startups are now defined as uh, all business organizations that work on innovation applied to business model products or services and register in the National uh, Register of Legal Entities. So another important innovation uh, brought by the law was the formalization of the definition of so-called angel investor, uh, the one who contributes money into the startup but without becoming a partner. Therefore, uh, financial investment made an individual or legal entity are not a part of the startup uh, share capital. Uh, so the outlook depends on the scars left uh, by the COVID-19 crisis and uh, the confidence that the government will be able to maintain the normalization of the deficit and debt over. And by the country ability to address existing structural uh, but, uh, bottlenecks. Um, so that's, that's more about, you know, uh, the pandemic and the impact. And of course, as many other uh, businesses, uh, you know, people are still recovering, but uh, it seems like in many other countries, this recording is happening, things got a little bit fast. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk here about certain numbers that are important uh, for you as the economic overview. So you will see that 1.2% uh, uh, of the GDP growth was reported for the first quarter of 2021, following the previous uh, two quarters of 7.8% uh, 7 and 3.2% respectively. Um, so you also see uh, 14, uh, about 1400 billion USD uh, was in GDP for uh, of Brazil reported at the end of 2020. That actually that number represents 120, uh, 1.28 of the world's economy, which is pretty impressive. Uh, 6.1 billion uh, US dollars was the amount of foreign investment in Brazil by July uh, 2021 compared only with 1.77 billion for the previous two months combined. 14.1% uh, uh, is the unemployment rate uh, in June 2021. Um, so 
uh, expected after the the pandemic, you know, or during the pandemic, uh, that that's uh, something that happened in many other countries. And nine percent is the annual inflation rate for uh, July 2021, uh, which is rising after a large dip uh, during 2020. There are some more other, uh, you know, economic indicators that you may like to see, uh, you know, in in our white paper that are also available right now. If you go to our website, you can actually download the white paper. It's there for everyone free, uh, you know, to, to look at these numbers and look at the information that I'm giving here. Um, so other indicators that you are going to see there, uh, the 2 3% GDP growth, is estimated uh, for 2022, and 4.9% uh, is expected for the remainder of 2021. And uh, 4.5 billion USD is expected for in direct investment in Brazil for uh, 2022. And uh, it, it is expected flat, flatted out uh, from 2021. So those were the, uh, you know, important indicators that I believe uh, for today is important for the for what is, uh, is the economic overview. So I'm going to continue with what is the startup ecosystem, which is really exciting because we have seen a lot of, uh, you know, information that is happening just recently about the ecosystem. And we are uh, totally excited to hear all this uh, you know, news uh, that are coming from Brazil. So um, just to give you an idea, the internet penetration and usage is still high, Brazil, Trace uh, only uh, um, the United States in total, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube users. And the country still has more mobile devices than humans inhabitants. Uh, and that also happened with some other countries in Latin America, like Colombia. Uh, Brazilians are famous for innovating ar around inefficiencies. and uh, uh, Their own attitudes tell different story that uh, dire uh, uh, headlines of uh, business press. Fundacity, a network for startups and investors, has found uh, that education and healthcare, two uh, of Brazil's most chrono chronically uh, troubled sectors, are precisely uh, the areas of investors that are most keen on. So, Fundacity actually, uh, if I believe correctly, uh, they become GUST. Um, uh, I had the pleasure to to be in contact with the uh, you know with the first co-founder of Fundacity. They are a, a good good network. We actually use Gust uh, for our uh, applications. Uh, you know when people are going to come to our program, so they have a huge database of uh, you know startups in there. Um, so in terms of uh, geographically uh, diversity, Brazil ideal geographic location has encouraged many investment and collaborations between USA and Latin American markets. Initiatives for startups are seen in the form of international accelerators, incubators, and startup develop development programs. The funding and mentorship of these initiatives, coupled with the government aid, uh, has allowed for the creation of local accelerators. So in here, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, you know, Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro, which are the main ecosystems uh, that we've seen in, Latin, in in Brazil. But of course, they they have so other so many other cities that are also important. I just have enough time to maybe talk about Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro here. So in terms of uh, Sao Paulo, is uh, by far the most mature startup uh, is seen in Brazil. Even entrepreneurs from rival cities uh, will tell you that most Brazilian startups are concentrated in the city. Uh, Transitive uh, uh, talent is one of the main advantages of Sao Paulo, as in that respect, um, establishing uh, tech companies like Google, Uber, and Airbnb to say nothing, establish uh, corporations in general have their Brazilian headquarters in the city. And when employees get uh, bored or if ins uh, inspiration strikes, they often leave uh, to start companies on their own. The same token, entrepreneurs looking to recruit uh, experienced uh, teams have no shortage of options from which uh, to choose. Uh, the uh, largest uh, startup in, in the country are based in, actually in the city in Sao Paulo. And talking about Rio de Janeiro, the city's uh, transformation in recent uh, years has been specifically directed towards creating a more attractive environment for a young and cosmopolitan professional class. 
Government programs to improve security, 4G connectivity, and transportation have in turn encouraged major private investment in the tech sector. Cisco is uh, in, in conjunction with uh, local authorities, is devoting 500 million to project uh, that uh, includes a venture capital fund and co development facilities located in the heart of downtown uh, revitalization. Next. Uh, has become the largest co-working space in all Latin America. And I have to say that Cisco actually has a very uh, close uh, relationship also with Canada, having one of the headquarters here in Toronto. Remember visiting uh, you know, Cisco a few years ago with some startups, and the connection was directly with uh, Rio de Janeiro at that time. Uh, so there you are going to see some of the numbers that I'm uh, presenting here, uh, you know, about the startup ecosystem. So uh, 2.3 billion, US, uh, billion USD uh, is the total amount invested in Brazil startups ecosystem at the beginning of the uh, January uh, to April 2021. 20% increase in venture capital investment despite the initial hit of the pandemic. Uh, you also see uh, 428 million USD raised in funds in startups in Sao Paulo by uh, the beginning of 2021. And you will see also some numbers coming from uh, Paraná and, and Santa Catarina. So $329 million US dollars raised in funds by nine startups in Panada um, and 7.6 million in Santa Catarina as well. Uh, so important numbers, also 155 venture capital deals made the first uh, trimester of uh, 2021, 56 merchant acquisitions in the first trimester of 2021, and eight startups has raised funds between 1.8 million US dollars to 18 million US dollars at the beginning of 2021. And if you uh, follow LATAM Startups News, you have seen that one of uh, the startups that was part of our uh, first and second uh, phase in our portfolio, they actually become unicorn uh, last week, uh, you know, raising also a good uh, round uh, to be in Series D now. So uh, that's very exciting, uh, you know, to hear from, um, from Brazil. Now I'm going to start uh, talking about the key sectors, and of course I cannot dismiss fintech. Uh, fintech, uh, even uh, with the challenges that uh, you know, the pandemic has brought uh, to this country. The Brazilian fintech ecosystem has exhibited uh, resilience by ex attracting uh, over 500 uh, million US dollars. I will say it's close actually to 600 million dollars uh, volume of investment in the first quarter of 2021. And the country has the four uh, highest adoption rate worldwide according to EY ranks uh, in 2017. The largest fintech hub in Latin America with over 500 companies has been the largest unbanked population, 40, 49 million unbanked uh, individuals. And there is no surprise that the fintech sector is dominating. Uh, so if you have been a part of our uh, other, uh, you know, events uh, with Latin startups, you've seen that this is a tendency uh, from most of the countries we have presented. Brazil and Mexico actually represent the most, uh, you know, fintech uh, companies uh, coming to, uh, you know, being, being the leaders in the market and in this particular sector. So the top cities, uh, you know, in, in Brazil that are uh, actually uh, bring more fintech companies, Sao Paulo, uh, with the four largest uh, fintech ecosystem, mainly responsible for uh, boosting um, the overall country's global Fintech, fintech ranking. And then uh, per sec segments, um, you will see banking, 74% traditional banking. Customers are now adopting fintech banking service. 60% fintech adoption rate between uh, money transfer and payment space. And then you have financial management space uh, where startups are, are providing software and streamlines around AR, AP, and small to medium businesses. So, and we all, all also wanted to say something about the main players, uh, you know, that in this area, there are Nuna Bank, um, Pag Seguro. So Nuna Bank acquired uh, 750 million US dollars in the last funding round in 2021 with a total funding of 1.5 billion 
uh, you know, and a total value raise of 30 billion US dollars. So Paxagur also had a, a total funding of 2.3 billion and a total valuation of uh, 5.6 billion raise uh, as of uh, 20, uh, 2018 and acquired two companies in 2021. So that's the fintech sector. Uh, we have in total three sectors. Uh, so this one this was the one that is actually new in our white paper is property tech. So accordingly uh, uh, to the report of Deloitte in 2020, the real estate industry continues to evolve. And in areas of security, privacy, convenience, and choosing a property has been established, but is uh, predicted to progress by 2040. So like any other countries, uh, Brazil faced the uh, scarce ability of space in central areas. Local uh, is a key player in choosing a property as it uh, impacts the overall quality um, uh, you know, of uh, everyday life. And however, um, you know, this issue did not help back the emerging property tech companies that provide solutions in the area as of sharing, renting, property format, technology and connectivity as service infrastructure and purchase process. So for this part, uh, the top cities continue to be uh, like Sao Paulo, uh, being you know, uh, one of the top cities in, um, and Rio de Janeiro as well uh, in this tech area. And the top segments uh, that you are going to see is the marketplace uh, segment with a total of 140 startups by 2020 marketing segment as a total of uh, 70 to 78 startups by 2020 as well and property management segment as a total of 68 startups so the top uh, players that you're going to see in this area are loft uh, that operates um, by uh, buying renovating and selling real estates within within four month uh, frame the company is targeting uh, to simplify the process in Latin America uh, for Latin Americans to acquire property. And then Quintondar. Quintondar is the other one, a prop, uh, tech company that is uh, revolutionizing uh, the real estate marketplace for buy and selling and announced in May 2021 that the company has raised 300 million US uh, dollars in Series E. Uh, funding around and raise a total of uh, valuation of $4 billion. So that's extremely exciting. Now, the final sector, guys, is going to be a tech. And I'm about to finish the presentation and start uh, having our conversation with our speakers today. So in it, the pandemic has served as a catalyst uh, in the um, race of tech startups. With a school clusters during the EdTech is, is that of serves as heroes for remote learning. Uh, in 2019, the study by a uh, Brazilian Startup Association, the country has four, uh, about 450 tech startups, which is a whooping 25% uh, increase from the previous uh, year. 61% um, of the enterprise offers SaaS as a solution, and then um, 70% uh, which are basic uh, education. So in this part, uh, again, as the main uh, city, uh, we'll, you will see also Sao Paulo, but also the cities that are located in the Southeast region of Brazil. So as a top segments, um, a specific education, 22.4% of EdTech uh, startups focus on delivering education in a specific skills like language, calling skills, business education, and then a new tech, uh, new teaching forms and 22% and education platforms in a 20%. So you will see also uh, some um, ed tech, uh, you know, startups uh, coming up like uh, Descomplica and Educa. Uh, so Descomplica uh, is the first ed tech company that infil infiltrate the higher um, education market in Brazil, closing a funding of $84 million uh, in last February 2021. And then EDUCA provides short outline professional courses in various industries, uh, has a total funding of 10 million US dollars. Okay, so almost finishing here with some regular recommendations for you guys. Uh, so, uh, as always with the uh, other presentations, we kind of recommend, uh, you know, to take a, a good look of collaboration with locals. You know, uh, this is important for 
uh, any uh, international company entering to uh, the Brazilian market in specific, you know, taking in consideration that Brazil is the only country in the whole region that speaks a language that is different from uh, the others, which is uh, Portuguese. So you need like a find a good partner, uh, a local partner, and there are very good people there that can help you. In particular, in the tech sector, uh, there are many people that speak the language, you know, English as, as a, you know, business language. So you are not going to have necessarily a hard time if you are going for the startup ecosystem, finding, uh, you know, people, uh, you know, um, speaking in English, at least from the leaders in, in the startup ecosystem. Um, that raised to the language part that I'm, uh, I'm talking here, you know, the general population, again, they speak uh, Portuguese, they, they understand some Spanish, so that's why sometimes we hear people saying they speak Portuño. Uh, so that's one of the things that, that you need to consider. And then, uh, you know, personal touch, close relationships are important to uh, in all aspects uh, of Brazilian society, and doing business is no different. Uh, so developing a strong personal connection with business partners, especially before discussing negotiations, is often very important to succeed. Uh, so those are the main recommendations. And of course, we are going to start, you know, our um, uh, presentation now with our speakers. Uh, they, I, I see Anna Pierce here, and I see Priscilla and Rogerio. So I'm going to stop sharing uh, my presentation here to uh, welcome them into the room. So I'm going to start with Anna, and then Priscilla, and then Rogerio, and giving the welcoming uh, to all of them. Hi, everyone. Hello, guys. Hello. Nice to see you here. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today and presenting the spotlight. Uh, so guys, um, I just have a few questions for you, as we discussed before. But I would like to first uh, make a good introduction of everyone. So I will start with Anna. Anna, can you please introduce yourself? Sure, sure. Uh, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the invitation, Miriam. And I, I always a little bit with Canada, just a little bit, even though it's not physical, but it's still there. That's how I see it. I am I am Ana Pires. I work at Softax, it's a nonprofit organization. It's an NGO that works here in Brazil, the developing growing sector. For 25 years now, yes. our goal is always make your life easier on, on the process of a new country, a new journey for your life and personal and professional with the company. And we hope that help you guys as much as possible on this journey with partnerships, connections, and the open up of your company overseas. So thank you so much, Miriam. Thank you so much, Anna. Uh, so Rogerio, you can go next. All right, thank you very much, Miriam, for this invitation. And uh, I'm in the south of Brazil. I'm very happy to be speaking to you from a different city. I'm not in Rio. I'm not in Sao Paulo. I'm in south of Brazil, near the border with Uruguay and Argentina, about 1,000 miles south of Sao Paulo. And uh, I am one of the founders of the Think Global Initiative and other uh, companies. I work for more than 20 years in consulting business in the field of uh, in, in, uh, innovation, family business, and other areas. I'm also a teacher in post-graduation, and I have 11 books written, some of them up here. And I'm very happy to be working again with LATAM, and I'm very pleased to be uh, sometimes in LATAM personally, and meet uh, Miriam personally in some of the missions that I have already organized to Canada and other places. So that's a bit about me. Thank you very much. That's right. Thank you, Rogerio. And Priscilla, very nice to see you here. <laughs> very so nice to be here, Miriam. Thank you so much for the invitation. I'm here in Rio de Janeiro. So <laughs> it's a beautiful city. It's really nice to hear everything you said about Brazil. It, it's a very good country to invest and in, with creative people, as you said. So currently I'm working 100%. I'm 100% dedicated in my dream job, which is help children thrive and succeed in life by developing their social emotional skills. So I'm here with uh, Light Tech, which is an ed tech that was in Latam for the last two years. And I've worked in international companies for the last 15 years, but 
right now I'm focused on my dream. So that's it. I'm very glad to be here with Rogério and Ana. Nice to meet you both. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you, Rogério. Nice to see you, Ana. Nice to see you, Priscila. That's perfect, guys. So we just have a few minutes to uh, be speaking about some important uh, questions, uh, you know, that, that are going to be important for the audience in particular. So I'm going to start with the first question is, um, you know, uh, Rogerio, I'm going to start with you. Uh, okay. What new technology trends do you see in the Brazilian market raising during the pandemic? And uh, Ana and Priscilla, if you want to complement any of the questions and the, uh, the answer, just please do. I will go with each of you for one of the questions, different questions, okay? Rogerio, go ahead. Yes, okay. Thank you, Miriam. But first of all, I would like to say one thing about the language barrier that you, you said. Uh, here in Brazil, it's not difficult to find people that speak uh, English in some technical areas or as a leader of organizations. So... Uh, one of the technologies that are growing is uh, every kind of technology that involves translation, live translation, that to help Brazilian people to connect even more with uh, different languages, especially English, of course, but also Spanish, because as Miriam said, here in Brazil we speak Portuguese, and we are surrounded by countries that speak Spanish, which is not the same, it's different. So, the, the technologies that involve uh, simultaneous translation uh, areas is one of the things. Another important thing is everything connected with cybersecurity. Because for a long time, uh, Brazilian companies are not very uh, worried about it. But even uh, some important areas of the government in Brazil has suffered invasions, hacker invasions and ransomwares and things like that during uh, 2020, especially during the pandemic times, the, the highest uh, pandemic time. So that's another thing that happened and it's being uh, connected. And that's, that's I, I, I leave or Anna and Priscilla uh, to add some other questions about it. Um, I also think there's a lot of space for distant education. I mean, the industry has uh, had an incredible increase but there's still a huge demand for courses, lectures, training, and everything in distance. Um, schools that had not the online structure were forced to adapt. So uh, we needed a new type of teaching methods, you know, the te teacher-student interaction, the methodology. So that's the, I think it, it will still grow. And as uh, Rogério said, I, say, I think cybersecurity has become crucial, you know, to protect the systems, the network, and the programs from digital attacks. So that that would be the two points I would um, say. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Anna, do you want to contribute also something? Yeah, sure. Uh, I would like to add to Priscilla, the education sector really grow because nobody was prepared for the COVID. So nobody knew that we're going to have to have e-learning and have all the education system be online so i think it really grew a lot and it got much better here in brazil and the other area for me that really has grown a lot is small not really small business sometimes someone knew how to do something it could be a dish it could be a task and they just start doing it and use platforms like so such as marketplace to sell it so a, a lot of marketplace has been used and also delivery servers because those small business really have boom like it was amazing the growing on this pandemic and they have been using all of that service so i think those are the other areas and business that have an impact i think the pandemic make a lot of people think in uh have more empathy with people so a lot of business on the area of uh helping people understand people uh and helping them really to achieve uh better results i think has grown in the, yeah, the environment, social and corporate governance, I think has grown a lot in the pandemic as well. Yeah, thank you, Ana. And Priscilla, uh, what type of startups do you think the Brazilian market will need post-pandemic? Um, probably um, data and ana analytics. Uh, I mean, when you analyze raw data, you know, to make conclusions about the information you have, I think it's really important, especially um, after the pandemic, because it helps the business optimize their performance. You can reduce costs, 
you can identify more ways or different ways of doing business. And when you have that type of information, you can analyze customers, you can see their trends, their, if they are satisfied or not. And then you can lead you know, your company to better, and, to better products, to better service, to better solutions. So I think that would be, um, I don't know, if I wasn't in ed tech, I'd probably be in data and, and analytics. <laughs> That's good to know. Uh, and Anna or Rogerio, do you want to add something else um, about Priscilla said? Well, uh, I think uh, one of the things that are uh, giving a, ha a headache to most Brazilian companies right now is the new general data protection law here in Brazil. So solutions to help Brazilian companies to better understand, to better work with this new law uh, is something that is going to be very explosive in this year and the next and following years. So I believe it's a big opportunity for uh, startups to, to work in this. Also, Brazil has a, a, an important uh, agribusiness market. So any uh, startups connected with agribusiness uh, is going to have a very huge growth. So it's an opportunity because it's uh, one of the most solid areas that Brazil has is the agribusiness. Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah. So entering to the next question, perhaps, is going to be um, how Canada and Brazil can work together to promote technology exchange and partnerships for the next couple of years? And I would like to ask this question to Anna. Anna has been working with this part for a long time with different type of countries, right? How is your vision in that area, Anna? Uh, I always say, Smidia, that everything is about connection and, and really making the right connection, develop partnerships for life. For me, partnership for a month, for two months is for life. So it's creating more connections between those two countries. I think we are very well known for very being close. I think the cultures, are, they match, but they do match well. So we can work in develop partnerships between organizations such as, for example, organizations like I am uh, here at uh, Abis, um, Sebrae, Acespro. Those are big organizations in Brazil. So I match with them in, in Canada so we can have more Canadian business here and vice versa. And the other thing that I really like to try to see is more working with Canadian companies here and Brazilian companies in Canada working with open innovation uh, in the R&G with universities so we can have projects together with both countries. I know it is already happening, but I love to see more happening in the future. And find, for example, a partnership that we can have. I, kind, I, call, I call this kind of an internship. So bring Canadian companies to Brazil and Brazilian companies to Canada to work together and for months, three months, six months program. It's not a soft lending program. It's like a portfolio adding to their products. Let's pretend I have a company here and I receive a Canadian company here and that company could be working with me and we can selling the products for them too, but they add it to my product. It would be a great experience to know the culture, to know the business and to see if your product has another fit with the market. And the same thing for Brazilians in Canada. I think it's a great way to working uh, and see if you have an match with the Canadian market. It's such, such a huge market. I like to add some, something also was said before about the agritech. Agritech business is the fourth business in Brazil. It's a, also a booming market and it's a very strong market. I think a lot of opportunities also to work with Canada on that area as well, not just that, so many others. That's true, that's true. Uh, Rogerio, do you want to maybe add something about partnerships between Canada, Brazil, anything that you have in mind at this point? Yeah, uh, I believe uh, Brazil is, and I can say here in the south of Brazil, we have a very interesting uh, technological parks. So also in Rio, Sao Paulo, uh, there's some interesting parks in the northeast of Brazil. But here in the south, I can tell you, there are some of the biggest and best uh, technological parks like Technopook, Technosinus and others. So uh, through these technological parks, uh, you can connect with the tech industry here in Brazil. And you have a very easy way to, to have access to anything you need. 
So maybe it's one of the, the easiest ways to connect. And that's also, there's also a lot of accelerators, uh, high quality accelerators here in Brazil, like Latam is one of the top of the world for me, but here in Brazil, we also have some important uh, accelerators and you can connect with these accelerators. So you can have access to other uh, startups and other uh, ecosystems players that may help you to understand better the Brazilian market. Yeah, and thank, thank you for that, Rogelio. <laughs> and uh, I want to remind the audience that you can also ask questions if you have any questions. But Priscilla, do you have anything to add in about, you know, how to make a good partner between Brazil and Canada? Yeah, I think it's a perfect match because we have on one side, you know, Canada, which is a developed country and can help with the investments in new technology. And we have on the other side, Brazil. And in Brazil, we have 200... 210 million people eager to consume, eager for consuming. And we have a vast area of land uh, for agro-industry. Rogério has pointed that out already. We can produce year-round. Um, we also have a well-established mining industry that we can take advantage of. We have we are self-sufficiency um, in oil and gas. And we also have an experience and a strong banking system, as Miriam pointed out. So I think it's a perfect, we can be a perfect match, a perfect partnership. Yeah, thank, thank you for that. Now, uh, the last question that I will have here, and maybe if somebody else has questions, please do uh, ask in the Q&A section. Uh, but the, the last question is about the advice for Canadian technology companies entering the Brazilian market. I'm going to start with Rogerio. And uh, the, the important part of this this part, in particular, when we have seen, you know, uh, Canadian companies entering the uh, Brazilian market, sometimes they struggle a little bit to understand the cultural business difference, or uh, you know, sometimes understanding in general, you know, how they should approach uh, customers or partners in the Brazilian market. So, what will be your best advice, uh, Rogerio, for uh, Canadian companies or international companies entering into Brazil? Uh, thank you, Miriam. Uh, Anna Piri said something that is very important. It's to find the, the best connections and the right connections. So uh, if you don't know Brazilian market, first start to know uh, who can be your partner here, who can give you information, how can you, get, how can you gain access to, to the market, to, to know better about what's going to, to be uh, to work here in Brazil, to do business with Brazilian companies. So that's the step one, finding the right partners here in Brazil to understand better the culture. And uh, Brazil is a very big country. So it's the size of Canada. It's with uh, seven times the population of Canada. And Canada has cultural differences. If you go to Vancouver, it's a reality. If you go to Toronto, it's a different reality. If you go to Quebec, it's a different reality. It's the same here in Brazil. So different places, different cultures, different regions of Brazil, different cultures. You do business differently depending on the area of Brazil. So find the right partners here who can provide you information and access to better understand the reality of the market here. Step one, and perhaps the most important thing that you can do. Um, I would just add something. Um, I mean, I, I agree 100% with Rosario. <laughs> we would probably need a medium in Brazil, you know? <laughs> Everything you do for the Brazilian companies in Canada, we would probably need a million here in Brazil to do exactly what Rogério has said. Because, I mean, once you have that partner, you, you, you'll just go faster. You know how to act, how to behave, what to say. Yeah, I agree 100% with everything he said. <laughs> so, Median, we need a copy of you here. <laughs> I already have a little copy there. It's Rafael Pinto. <laughs> <laughs> he's working yeah, on the, yeah, know, he's looking at the, <laughs> he's looking at the yeah. uh, um uh at this uh, webinar as well so th rafa uh hello <laughs> bia <laughs> is also there anna your comments on that part uh what will yeah. be uh yeah um i always like to say to the companies that are coming here and it's the same going to any country uh, like, like they already said find the right partner so Organizations such as, if you come from Canada, find organizations such as Miriam, they can, she can help you find 
already you know, it could be Softex, it could be Apex Brazil, it could be uh, a hub, it could be a accelerator incubator. The region that would be the best match. Uh, we talk about a lot about the regions. They're very different. The north is get is getting stronger, but it's very it's, it's small compared to the south or the southeast. If you want to come to the south, Santa Catarina or Paraná could be a good choice. Maybe you like better go to Rio or São Paulo. So we really have to find the best fit. For me, going to another country is be, be born again. So you have to know where you should be born again. So find the right connection. But Miriam will be a great place. So they have, she already have connections here. And Rafael is also amazing here. He can help you. And also we can help you with your new life, you know. Uh, and the first place is find the right place to go. So it could be Santa Catarina, that's pretty and nice. Or it could be the crazy Sao Paulo that I love so much. So it varies very much. So it depends on where you should go or where you want to go. But the partnership is key, like they said, because you can find, for example, a company here that can charge you a lot of money and not do anything. So find first partners that are non-profit. So this way you, you can find them and they can help you and then you can connect to the right uh, people here. So Portuguese will be an issue. Have someone that speaks Portuguese for sure. <laughs> Yeah, no, and that's why you guys are there too, right? You can also help yeah, these companies. Exactly. Uh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah, so you are very well located in different cities, so you can also help. And yeah. I will I will add uh, maybe the last question here because we are uh, running uh, out of the time, and then after this, it will be a very nice networking for people that want to go and mingle, uh, you know, in the networking uh, tool that Hoping has. But uh, the, the next question that I had, and this is really the last one, is, what lessons learned has given the pandemic to you guys? Uh, so Priscilla, I'm going to start with you. This was unexpected for everyone. In regards of the company, what was your experience? What lessons learned did you have? Um, well, um, if you look in the books, I mean, in the studies, um, almost 70, 70, 73% of the startups fail in the first, second year uh, out of two reasons. I mean, they either run out of money you know, they can't raise capital or they have um, the market doesn't need what the solution they are offering. And only 19, around 20 percent um, fail due to the business model. So I think the pandemic affected and enhanced both of those causes of failures for everybody. You know, um, the companies that were not prepared to, you know, to, uh, to have that money saved or to, to be prepared of the market change went uh, went broke or due to the pandemic so uh, for us um it wasn't like that because we had a you know a great big business model and we got some angel investors and that's why it's so important to be associated with some important and strategic partners because um, we didn't have that but i think that was the major um lesson learned the pandemic gave all of us i mean these two uh major reasons were just enhanced after the pandemic that that would be my the two points i would uh, i'd point out <laughs> okay uh what about you anna what is uh, the biggest lesson learned for you being a part of the government you know working with uh, different type of startups also what was your experience for me is we don't have any more borders because you click you every is easy to talk to anyone you can set up meetings and if you, you were able to adapt to the pandemic, you could have grow. It depends on how you adapt. So in our case, for example, we did grow on the pandemic. And a lot of the companies that are with us, they did grow with the pandemic. So it's really a way to adapt and see the situation, see how you can evolve from that. So for me, it's no borders. You don't need to take a plane. You don't have to have a passport. You don't have to have a visa. It's, you're just there. I'll, uh, just an example, I have companies that open the business in several other countries in the pandemic mm -hmm. so i think it's just a way to how you see the situation i know it's not easy media because it was not expected but it's how you adapt yeah yes. the speed of change is really and important yeah. that's a really important point yeah. uh, and and this is a good part like i always mention this in the webinars that being in latin america and being in the all these different countries we unfortunately unfortunately 
are used to crisis. <laughs> so this one was one another one in the check, right? The checklist. Uh, but okay, Rogerio, um, same, your takeaway on this part, and Enrique has actually a question for you. He said, I would like to know Rogerio's idea about characteristics to identify a Brazilian partner. Um, yeah, so if you can answer the question, it will be great. Miriam, uh, there is a problem in the the connection. Could you repeat the question, please? The yeah, the question is, is the question is. I would like to know Rogerio's idea about characteristics to identify a good Brazilian partner. All right. So first of all, I would say that we do not know when the next black swan is going to appear, but we do know that will appear. So might be a next pandemic situation, might be a next unexpected event anywhere in the world that may change everything that we think we know. So uh, I work with business consulting for more than 30 years. And especially in these last two years, I saw solid companies break down completely because they were not as uh, organized as they should. So what happens with a startup that are starting business, that are starting to connect, that are starting to organize things? Well, these startups perhaps survived. Some startups that were not connected, that were not in line with other entrepreneurs, that were not having some kind of mentorship, that were not connected with investors, of course, they did not survive. So the lesson I learned and I tried to, to tell my clients, my business partners and everybody is be connected. Be connected with people, be connected with investors, be connected with new ideas, but do not stand alone because if you need help, you do not have it when you are alone. So that's the main thing I understand. And answering Enrique, I would say that the best characteristics that you have to try to find is who are who is this person that you are uh, perhaps having as a partner in Brazil? Uh, well, with whom is this person connected in Brazil and other countries? What this person of this company has done? Who are the, the, the associates of this person, the, the partners of this person of this company? So uh, take a look at LinkedIn, take a look at uh, the, the websites, take a look at what this person or what this organization uh, does and think if this person is the correct one to introduce you to the markets here in Brazil or Latin America. That's the, the point that I will tell you. Uh, try to know someone uh, about uh, doing more research on what this person or this organization has done. So that's that's why. And I would like to say that Rafael Pinto is a wonderful person. And he also is my partner in Think Global. That's true. Uh, okay, and I, I have Carlos Reyes also saying hello and regards from Mexico. So. Thank you, guys. That that was really, uh, you know, a good conversation about, you know, what is coming up, uh, you know, in, in regards of uh, the pandemic and how people can actually, uh, you know, find good partners and find good ways to enter the Brazilian market. This is an exciting time, I think, for uh, technology companies uh, right now, because now many people have adopted technology uh, during the pandemic. So hopefully, uh, you know, people will be actually looking at partners in Brazil. That that will be our main focus um, during. And, and actually, we are right now in a boot camp with Canadian companies, uh, you know, looking at, uh, you know, uh, markets in Latin America. So last words, uh, last recommendations from everyone. Uh, just one sentence and we can finish here and go for the networking. I would like to Thank start you. with Anna. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you so much. First of all, again, thank you for having me. And for the companies that want to come to Brazil, welcome. We are here to help. We are here to open the business for you and to find the best place that you're going to work here in Brazil. And the companies that want to Canada, you have me and there to help you with this new life that you're going to have in this amazing country. So do not um, be afraid to do this, this new uh, um join your company is amazing this new life that you're going to create it that's right uh priscilla any last words yeah just um, feel free everybody that's watching to uh, contact us uh, we're here brazilians are usually very friendly they like to help so um 
Just contact us at LinkedIn. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. And Rogerio, your turn. Well, thank you, Marianne, very much for this invitation. Thank you for everybody that is watching us. And we are here to help. Count on us here in Brazil. If you do not know a person here in Brazil, now you do. Now you have people <laughs> yeah, that you can do. count in. So we are here to help you. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, thank you very much to everyone. And uh, uh, Teresa, that is uh, watching us right now. Yes, uh, there Samuel put in the, the, uh, a comment. This is going to be recorded and it's going to be posted in our YouTube channel. So to everyone, thank you for being here today and thank you for, uh, you know, be a part of this conversation. You can go right now to networking. So you can be meeting other people in this room. Thank you, everyone. And we'll see you on December 8th uh, during Uruguay, Argentina and Uruguay in the spotlight. Thank you. Nice. <laughs>